Hi, this is Joseph. Today is Wednesday. Uh, this was FOMC, as you can see the uh, results here. I'm looking at the euro dollar on the top left, the pound dollar on the top right, and then I have over here on the left Japanese yen, so the uh, dollar yen, and then the dollar Swiss. Uh, that's all I've got on this chart. I do trade others. Uh, you can see the currency pairs that I trade on the website. So if you're interested in using the trade copier service, please go to the website and you'll see that there. Uh, you'll see it on the website, the all of the currency pairs that I trade. Now, good question, right? Today, <laughs> you're probably wondering, how do you trade FOMC? How do you trade around major economic news events like today? So the first thing that I want to mention is that I've been doing this a long time. When I first started trading back in 2000, and 2001, there was a, a strategy that everybody used to use. It was called a straddle. Um, I, I don't really hear too many people talk about it or explain it. Sometimes people will talk about it and they'll use a different uh, term for it. But basically what we would do, and just about everybody was doing it, it was easy to do. And we would see a range of consolidation, let's say, before the economic announcement was to be delivered. And this would happen on every economic announcement. It wasn't just FOMC or interest rate decisions or non-farm payrolls. It was with almost every economic report, even the ones out of the UK and the Eurozone. So it was really easy to do. And I would go down to like a five minute chart and I would put a buy order, you know, about 10 points above the high, five points above the high, and then a sell order, 10 points or five points below the low. And we never really had to worry about head fakes or spikes or volatility spikes and things like that. It just didn't happen all that often. And a lot of people have had their own, you know, their own explanation about what was going on back then. The, the you know, markets were relatively new to trading. There weren't, you know, the kind of... Uh, uh, I guess the reaction of traders wasn't the same. I mean, everybody's got their own opinion about it. The other opinion is that brokers eventually figured out that it was easy money and people would make a lot of money trading around news events like that with this straddle. So what would happen is you would put the um, one cancels the other, right? So if one triggered and it went up in one direction, again, we hardly ever saw volatility spikes. So if it went to the upside, my buy order would be taken in and it would the other. Uh, so that would immediately cancel the trade to the downside. And it was really safe to do, but it didn't last very long. And then everybody started thinking and saying, and it was all over, you know, forums and there was all kinds of um, conspiracy theories about how these spikes like this were designed to stop people from doing that nowadays. And so now most people don't talk about straddle option or straddle uh, opportunities like that to get into the market because it can be very volatile. So I know that now. <laughs> I don't, I, I haven't traded that way in many, many, many years. It just doesn't give me the opportunity to. So the only thing I can do is wait until after the news is released and wait until I get a good opportunity to see how people are reacting to it. So the other thing I want you to keep in mind is that if you're going to use my service, I know that you and a lot of other subscribers are using different brokers and I can't control what you see on your platform. I may be using a different broker. So what I see, if I was to get into a trade, let's say I was to short it, right? Let's say I was to sell it right away. And I might get a really good fill. But if it's at a really volatile time, like maybe just a few seconds or maybe even a minute after the news is released, it's very possible that your broker could freeze the data on your platform and not allow the trade to go through or... Uh, let's just say that they freeze the platform, uh, the data altogether for about five minutes. I still hear that some brokerages do not allow their their clients, their trader clients to trade around news events because you could lose a lot of money when you're on the wrong side of something like that. And it's very difficult to get out when price is moving really fast. You don't always get the exit that you intend. The other thing is, let's say you do get filled, but it's not the same fill I get. Let's say the broker deliberately, there are some brokers out there that manipulate what their, what their clients see on their platform. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to go into, again, conspiracy theories and all kinds of slamming different brokers. But again, you're probably aware that brokers can and do, they, they you know, exercise that kind of behavior. 
they it, it is designed to confuse and frustrate the inexperienced traders or good traders too. You know, if the data freezes, it's kind of like trading in the dark with your eyes closed. It's hard to see or you, you're kind of afraid. You don't know what's going to happen next and when they're going to upload, when that data is going to start uploading into your platform again. So anything can happen. Um, the other thing I see during major events like this is I use several different brokerage uh, firms, d different accounts, different MT4 platforms, and I see lots of different things going on from one account to the next. Sometimes there's a difference between 30 pips on the euro dollar between one company to another. Like it's that bad. And a lot of people would argue that that's just pure manipulation. It really shouldn't be that bad. Now, one thing I do want to say is that um, a lot of people aren't aware of this, but inside of your MT4 platform, if you look at the market, if you look at uh, the all of the different currency pairs that you have set up on the left-hand side, you may see that your MT4 platform was loaded up by default with a whole bunch of them, like 200, 300, and that can slow down the data in your platform inside of the MT4 platform. So what you may want to do if you find that that's happening to you when you try to trade around major economic events, delete the ones you don't need. That's what I do. And I've been told from a lot of different brokers and I use Social Trader Tools. Social Trader Tools has warned all of us who use that trade copier to copy my trades. They've told us that the best the best performance is if you have 50 or less in your MT4 platform on that left-hand market watch side. So get rid of the ones you don't need. I know it looks kind of cool to see the numbers moving sometimes, but when there's a lot of data coming in really fast with major economic events like an interest rate decision, all of those currency pairs, all of those charts are trying to refresh and upload all of that data. And if you don't need them, just get rid of them. It can slow down and freeze the price feed in your MT4 platform. It can be an issue. So be aware of that. The other issue, again, is that, like I said, there are some brokers out there that just simply manipulate what their clients see. It's not fair. It's nasty. Um, it is designed to get you to lose money. Um, but that is, again, primarily why I wait so long after economic data. I don't get in... 30 seconds, 10 seconds, five seconds, even if I know what's going to happen and I get a signal, I won't do it with my trade copier service. Again, I don't want you to lose, so I can't control, and I also can't control what you see on your platform and what your broker's doing. So the best thing that I can do is wait about five, 10, 15 minutes until after things settle down a little bit and then get into the trade. If let's say you do copy my trades and your broker freezes the data or does something strange to their platform. Again, it's not something that happens on a regular basis, but it could happen. And again, that's why you'll see very often, like with non-farm payrolls, there are times when I won't trade it at all. And it's not because I don't know what I'm doing and it's not because I suck because I can't get into the trade. I see what's going on. But I know that so many things can happen and one trade that I execute can affect hundreds if not thousands of people because I cannot, number one, control or see what you see on your platform. Number two, you know, like I said before, it could be that your platform may slow down if you have a lot of different unnecessary, unused currency pairs. So get rid of them. And then the other issue is, you may be trading with a broker that just for whatever reason may target your account and has slowed down the data. You might get a different fill uh, or, or a different uh, price feed than what I see. So I'm very careful when I trade the news. I do not jump in the split second that the news is released. As a matter of fact, I waited also. I did take one to the upside when it was up here and it looked like it was breaking out and then it stalled. It wasn't going anywhere. So I closed it down with, I think it was plus two and a half pips. I did not as much as I wanted to. I could see what was happening. I wanted to, believe me, I wanted to jump in down here. And with my account, I can control it and I can do it. But I cannot do it and I will not do it with the trade copier because I know that you may not get filled until all the way up here because brokers can all do different things. 
So I'm very, very careful, very, very patient. And then the other trade was here to the downside. And I believe we picked up about 16, 17 pips here to the downside. And so far it seems to be stalling. So I'm going to be looking for another opportunity during the Asian session. I might not get it. It may take until the London session, but I trade very, very conservatively. I want you to win. I don't want you to blow up your trading account. You will earn profits and you will hit your 10% profit target. Let's say, for example, if you're using Lark funding, again, there's no time limit. There's no time limit as to when we have to hit that 10% target. It could be in two weeks, it could be in two months, however long it takes us to get there. And in today's trading environment, I'm sure you're well aware that it's been very, very choppy over the last few weeks, last couple of months. It's been very difficult. It's been really choppy. A lot of things are going on and there's a lot of uh, uncertainty in the markets and that causes people to trade in a very certain way that um, uh, you know doesn't really lend to trending opportunities. I mean, you can see there's a lot of just sitting here here and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And sometimes you get one little opportunity and that's about it. And then you have to wait longer. You know what I mean? That's the name of the game. We get paid to wait. We get paid to sit patiently and look for choice opportunities. That's what I'm getting paid for. That's how I make my money. So again, rest assured that if you use my trade copier service, I do not jump in even as much as I want to. I can see what's happening here. I will not do that to you or to my trade copier subscribers, all of the other ones, because I, again, I, they're all using different brokers and I have no idea where they're going to get filled. So I'm going to look for the safest, easiest trades. And again, if you use my trade copier, the best trades usually happen as a result of the typical economic report, right? It's not the one that, you know, causes everybody to just go crazy and we're waiting for a statement afterwards like today. FOMC is a very unique report because it's not like, let's say, retail sales or PPI or CPI or something like that. That is just kind of a one and done number and, you know, we really don't have to worry about it. There's often a lot of speculation afterwards, but it's not like the way we see price act today. Usually, and sometimes, it can, you know, spike in one direction with the rate decision itself, and then with the uh, statement and the press conference afterwards, they can reverse the whole thing, which is what you see sometimes. So I remember, I mean, that, that's been going on since I've, I've been trading, you know, with these uh, interest rate announcements, even in the Eurozone. You know, Mario Draghi would do it, and Trisha and all of them. They've all been capable of causing this kind of behavior where the statement itself, the interest rate decision is one direction and then the comments and the press conference afterwards when they're when they're answering questions that is what causes the reversal in many instances and that's kind of what we saw today so again i'm very very careful um safely trading it we didn't have a loss i mean this could have been a dramatic loss if we were on the wrong side but i know better i don't trade that way uh, there I've, I've been getting a lot of questions about and if you're curious if you want to know how i'm trading what these indicators you know what i'm looking for what i'm doing and what kind of setup i'm looking for I do share that information with my trade copier subscribers. So you can learn my trading system over time. Uh, I am working on putting together, and it should be available after Christmas. I was hoping to get it done this month, but it'll probably be after the first of the year. It's a, a free trading system that I'm going to put a membership area for all of my trade copier subscribers. So you will be able to go in there and access videos and learn my trading system. So eventually you can learn to do it yourself. If you're ready to sign up to use my trade copier system, go to the sign up page. And I have a very unique sign up. I don't have, you know, just, uh, I just don't leave the, the, sign up button to everybody. Um, I want this to be very specific to people who really want to use a trade copier service um, and they want to use it correctly. They don't want it. They're not going to come in and use excessive lot size. We, you know, we're very patient. Most of the people that use my trade copier service understand lot size. They're not going to come in and use 30 lots right away. They're going to start very slow, watch to see what the profitability is on the trades, and then increase it as we go along. And there's some equity built in the account. And again, that's why I recommend using Lark funding because they don't have a deadline to hit that 10, like a, a timeline, I should say, to hit that 10% target. You just hit, you know, whenever you hit that 10% target, you earn your life funded account. Now I try to get there as fast as possible. I try to get there as fast as possible. As a matter of fact, we hit over $10,000 on a 100K account 
just, I think it was today on one of the other accounts. So it happens relatively fast, but I'm not going to tell you that it can happen in two days or two weeks. I couldn't promise that because I don't know what the market's going to do. You know, if the market starts moving sideways like this, and this ends up looking like a daily time frame or the one hour chart just goes sideways for a whole week, there's just not going to be that many opportunities. So if you're using a funding company that has a deadline and they say you have to hit the 10% or the 8% target or whatever it is in 30 days, well, that's going to be difficult to do if you have fewer trading opportunities. So that's why I recommend using a company that doesn't have a time limit as to when you have to pass the funded challenge. So again, Lark funding is just a one stage funding, I'm um, sorry, challenge uh, evaluation process, just one stage. And then you hit the 10% target and you get a live account. And then from that point on, however much is available in your account every month, you get a percentage of that. I think it's 75% is the payout with Lark funding and it's fair. It's safe. It, you know, you, you will never have to worry about blowing up these accounts. If you use conservative lot size, if you're looking on building a business or a steady income, this is the way to do it because eventually you can get the biggest account that Lark funding has, let's say a $500,000 account. If you have a $500,000 account, even 5% a month, is still going to get you well over $10,000 a month. I think it's like close to $18,000 on your payout after Lark Funding takes their cut. So that's really good money. I mean, a lot of people could do really well on fifteen dollars to $18,000 a month. That's how you want to build this business. And you want to continue to use my trade copier to copy those trades for you if you don't have a trading system and you're not comfortable yet trading on your own. Thank you very much for watching this video.